Let them eat cake. Hey, this is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at Let Them Eat Cake. This is from Osprey Games, and it's part of our Osprey Games series that we're doing right now. Now remember, we've got the contest going right now for the Odin's Ravens game, so you can get a brand new free copy of Odin's Ravens. I'm going to put the link in the description below. You can check out the video where I kind of queued up the Osprey Games series, and the details for that raffle uh, are in that video. So make sure to check that out, and you might be able to win a brand new In the Shrink copy of Odin's Ravens. Let's see the deets on this one. Three to six people, so this is more of a group uh, party type game, 45 to 80 minutes and 12 plus on this one. So this one's really designed, and a lot of the Osprey games I've seen now are designed in a way where you can get some younger players involved. Let's get right into the box and the design here. Again, Osprey Games is doing a great job with their design and their of their product. And you can see here the box opens up in that nice book style. Uh, it's got a really uh, colorful kind of insert on the inside. You've got your rule book, and we'll use this here to kind of go through a couple things of the gameplay. And one thing I think they did a nice job with on this one is there's actually a... Uh, a little plastic tray that they included. And that tray is designed to kind of hold all the components. These are really the components that uh, I'm not going to need for this, this you know, game play here that we've got in front of us. And we've got a three-player game set up. You'll see there's two different areas for the cards. There's a couple areas to hold the various, you know, cardboard chits in the game, as well as some of the pawns. You know, I thought that was a really nice little insert job they did on this one. Nice and secure, holds everything right in the box. We'll close that up. And let's get into our components really quick here. So we've got a nice little guillotine they included, and this is just a nice cardboard stock. You pop that together. We've got our Medal of Honors here that they have included. We've got our face-up general cards, and this is really just a stack of, uh, of generals that you can gain throughout the game. We'll talk about where these come into play. We've got our deck of cards here, which is considered the pantry. And within these cards, you're going to have... Um, you're going to have cake cards that look like this that are going to allow you to actually, it's a win condition of the game. Once you get 40 of these, you can be the winning player. There's also going to be generals throughout the, the deck that are going to be in this that you can gain. And we'll talk more about how the pantry comes into play here during the gameplay. We've got our head of committee token. So every round uh, you know, of, of gameplay, there's going to be this series where you're going to go through actually voting people into various positions. And one of them is the head of committee. And the head of committee has some responsibilities we'll talk about here in a minute, but that's one really fun mechanic and aspect of this game is as you play, you're constantly voting people into various different roles that they're gonna play out on every game round. So that's what this token signifies. We're gonna have six of the reference sheets on one side. It's gonna tell you what you can cash your uh, military units or your generals in for and on the other side it's going to call out your voting order and the various positions you can vote for within a game round. What we have here in front of us is a three player setup and you'll see that you're going to have basically a character cards. So everyone's going to get one of these character cards which will be a different color for every person. This is a three player game so you're going to get up to two cards representing the other color. So it's not your color so I have a blue, green, and a gold color. So I'm going to get two golds and I'm going to get two greens for my blue character. And that's going to be the same for all these. So my green is going to get two golds and two blues, right? So those are going to be your voting cards you're going to use as you vote. Everyone's going to start with three Medal of Honors, which you'll find here. And you're going to get two starting cake cards that are only worth one point apiece. And then three pawns of that color. And your pawns, what those are going to be able to do, those that's what's going to actually get kind of executed throughout the course of the game, as well as those pawns count for extra votes when you vote. So, you know, you may throw in a voting card to vote for the gold player for one of the positions that you can vote for, and then you're always going to get to multiply that vote by how many pawns you have in the game. So as you lose those over the course of time, your votes will be less and less and less, and you'll have to have generals to kind of offset that, and you may have to cash in a general to kind of help you with a with a vote one way or the other. So it's also an interesting kind of mechanic as you're balancing how many pawns you have versus how many generals you have, and these pawns you never get back. So as you lose those pawns, you do lose kind of voting power, 
And then once a player has lost all three of their pawns, the game is immediately over, and that player does lose the game immediately. Let's jump right into our gameplay. And the first thing you're going to do when you start off the game is, <clears throat> I found this was a funny little thing they put in the rule book. Everyone around the table is going to shake hands to start the game. And whoever doesn't want to shake hands is immediately looked at as being suspicious. Now, whoever owns the game is immediately considered the head of committee. And they will get this token. Now, at that point in time, they can decide to either keep it or give it to someone else. But it doesn't really make that much of a difference the first round because right off of the, the beginning of gameplay, you're going to actually start to vote on who is the head of committee. Now, the next thing you're going to do, and one thing that's, that's very interesting here about this, is the very first round of gameplay, everyone is going to vote on who the head of committee is, which you're going to do every round. But there's something special that happens the first round that you play. If there isn't a majority vote on who should start as the head of committee, you actually will lose a, a medal if you're not within the majority. And these, these medal of honor are very important because whoever has the least amount of these medal of honors upon that round will go to the guillotine to be executed. And that's not really where you want to be in this game. So first round, you're going to vote on the head of committee. If you're not in the majority, you lose a medal of honor. And let's, let's talk about what the head of committee does. So the head of committee role really is going to break ties. So if there's any type of ties or, or arguments among that round of gameplay, the head of committee is going to be the one that's going to be able to come in and break that tie. The head of committee is also going to, at the very beginning of the game, you're going to have three Medal of Honors that are in play here. And that's all that's going to stay in play. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to vote on Head of Committee. So our three players are going to pick up their card. And again, you've only got the cards in your hand to vote on. And once you cast a vote, that card is out. You don't get those cards back until you've actually cast all your votes. So we're going to go ahead and vote. And I'm going to say um, that one. And this player is going to choose this one. And this player is going to choose this one. And you're going to keep those completely secret. And then you're all going to flip those over simultaneously. We're going to see, oh, gold player voted for blue. Green player voted for blue. Blue player voted for gold. So the blue player is the winner and stays the actual head of committee. So those votes will stay there. And we'll put the rest of our cards kind of to the side here for future voting. And now that head of committee is going to do a couple different things. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and claim a Medal of Honor because they're the head of committee. The second thing they're going to do is they're going to decide either one player loses a Medal of Honor, which will go back to our central pool, or I can choose another Medal of Honor and assign that to one of the other players. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send someone right to the guillotine right off the bat and not actually cause a vote upon the next round. I'm going to choose the gold player's Medal of Honor. I'm going to cash that in. And what that's going to do is we're going to now move into the enemy of the revolution voting phase. Now, in this situation, whoever has the minimum amount of Medal of Honors, which clearly now in this first round is the gold player with two, green has three, blue has four, they immediately become the enemy of the state and they go to the guillotine. Now, in future rounds, the generals that you gain that will be in play will help you offset that. If you have the most amount of generals, you can never go and be the enemy of the revolution. Um, there's also the fact that if you have a tie amongst the Medal of Honors and generals really aren't coming into play, you can actually have to go to a voting phase to see who actually goes to the guillotine. But in this example, it is our gold player, so we've queued them up there in the guillotine. Now we go into the phase of the guillotine operator. So we're all going to vote on who's the guillotine operator. So everybody's going to pick up their cards, and they're going to they're going to cast their vote. Uh, let's see, I'll use uh, this, and this player will go for that, and this player will go for that. And then we're all going to flip our cards over as we did before, and we're going to see who was chose. All right, we got two greens, and we have a blue. So it looks like our green player won that vote and is going to be the operator. So we can go ahead and, and uh, get our cards out of the way here. And now we can see our green player is the guillotine operator. So the green player now is going to decide, do I go ahead and execute one of this individual's pawns, or do I show mercy? Now, there may be a reason to show mercy. 
the gold player may say, you know what, I'll give you a medal of honor and I'll give you I'll give you my cake cards or I'll give you one of my cake cards. There's ways to bribe the players in this game. So you can kind of bribe the player to say, hey, show mercy, don't kill my pawn, and I'll give you some benefit for that. But if this green player decides to do that and show mercy, they have to cash in one of their medal of honors because it's essentially like they're not doing their job and they're taking a bribe. But let's say that I was going to go ahead and say, you know what, it's early in the game, you don't have enough to sway my vote, you are executed, okay? You poke your finger through the little hole here. You poke your finger through the little hole here. And you knock the pawn into the guillotine, and now this player has one less kind of voting power when you get into the votes. Because that really is what your voting power is about. Your pawns, again, give you a multiplier to how how whatever you cast your vote on. Now, it's very special when someone actually gets executed. When their pawns gets executed, they get kind of a bonus. They will actually gain three Medal of Honors, and they will gain a face-up general. And that's what this pile right here is for. They will gain a general that will join their deck. Next vote that we go into is the Secretary. So everyone's going to now vote again on who they would like to be the secretary. And we'll go ahead and cast our votes now at this point. Okay, we'll flip those over. And we'll see we've got a green, we've got a gold, and a gold. So the gold player is going to now be our secretary. So the secretary is going to flip over the top three cards, and it's three in this instance because we have three players. So however many players you have are the cards that you flip over. And we can see that we have a cake card worth 10, we can see a cake card worth 12, and we have a general. The secretary is now going to assign those cards to the players in any way that they see fit. So they may say, you know what, um... Uh, I'd like to have as the gold player maybe a little um, a little general power, so I'll assign that general to myself, and I'll give this player the 12 cake and this player the 10 cake, and that's going to be basically the end of the secretary phase. We now go into the food inspector round. So now there's going to be a final vote that's going to be cast, and we've only got one card left for each person. So we've got this person cast a vote for the blue, this person cast a vote for the gold, and this person cast a vote for the green. Now, what we have is a tie vote at this point. There's one for the blue, one for the gold, one for the green. Let's look at our votes here. Our gold player only has two pawns, and this general isn't assigned to them yet, but there's two pawns, and I cast my vote, so my vote is however many votes I cast times multiplied by my amount of pawns. So I essentially have two votes in this instance. What we have here are three votes. I got my one times my three, which is three. I have my one times my three, which is three. So we actually have a tie vote right here, but guess what? I'm the head of committee, so I break ties. And in this instance, I can decide who the food inspector is going to be. So as head of committee, I'm gonna make the decision. So it can either be uh, the green player or it can be the gold player is going to be the food inspector. So I'm going to go ahead and make the decision that the gold player is going to be the food inspector. So the gold player would then look at the cards that are in front of everybody and decide if those cards are good. They say, you know what, I like how everything's organized right now. We're going to leave the cards as is, and all the players would then claim those cards. Or... The food inspector can say, you know what, it's getting, let's say this was five, six, seven rounds deep in the game, and there's a lot of cake cards that have already come out, and these are some high cake cards, 12 and 10, might give someone the win. That food inspector could say, you know what, food's bad, right? Food goes back to the pantry. And in that situation, your cake cards would go back to the bottom of the pantry. Whatever generals were out would be claimed by whatever character that was in front of. So that may be very beneficial for the gold player in that instance because then they could just grab a general card and they could send these cake cards back to the pantry and these players don't get any cake points. Now, if they do that, they have to cash in one of their Medal of Honors, which could set them up for even a worse position upon the next round of the game when it's time to go to the guillotine. 
So let's say the gold player decided to say, you know what, it's good the way that it is. I'm gonna take my general. You guys are gonna get your cake cards. It's early in the game, it's not that big of a deal. That's gonna be the last voting phase of that round. Now, one of the last things that a player can do before it starts off again with the vote around the head of committee, they can take one of their cake cards and they can cash one of those cake cards in and say, I am going to feed the people, let them eat cake. And basically what that means is they cash a cake card into the bottom of the pantry and they're allowed to choose a medal of honor from any other player. Not the central repository of tokens, but another player they can choose a medal of honor from. So where do our generals come into play during the game? Because they're actually very important and you want to obtain as many of these as possible. And I'll show you why. If we look at our reference card here, we can see that there's three different things generals can do. You can cash in one of them to basically rig voting. So let's say a vote's taken place. You can say, you know what? I don't like the way that vote went. I'm gonna cash in one of my generals and everybody has to now re-vote. So any cards that have been put into play, stay in play and you have to re-vote. So it's just kind of a way to, um, you know, maybe help sort of sway the vote your way or give yourself another shot to maybe bribe someone one way or the other. Second thing you can do is you can cash in two of your generals and be able to seize the cake, which means after the secretary puts out the cards, you can cash in two generals and say, you know what, I'm just gonna take this cake card. Let's say a big high point cake card comes out. You can just grab that cake card and it's yours. Or the last thing you can do is cash in three generals. And if you do that, that's called a coup, which means before any voting takes place, let's say it's the food inspector phase and you want to be the food inspector or you want someone else to be the food inspector and someone else has bribed you to make them the food inspector you could cash in three generals and just make the call before anything even happens and a vote even goes down so those are the ways that you can utilize your generals as you gain them so again that's why it's so important that you do gain large portions of these generals because whoever has the most generals can never go to the guillotine. Whoever has these generals can cash them in to do one of these three things. So there's a few different things that can happen to end the game. Either one, your pantry deck runs out. Two, someone hits 40 cakes in their cake pile. Or three, soon as the first person where all three of their pawns are killed, the game immediately ends. And at that point you would add up how much cake is within each person's pile. And the person with the most cake would win the game. That's been Let Them Eat Cake. You know, I think this is a super fun party game. There's just a lot of stuff going on. That's what's so good about this game. Every phase, every voting phase, every game round, everybody's always, you know, trying to bribe other people with, hey, I'll give you some medal of honors or, or a general or some cake. They can't ever trade pawns, but you can trade about everything else to try to sway people's votes, bribe them. And the funny thing is you could take their stuff and be like, all right, I'll have you back on the next round and then just don't even do it, right? And that's what's so funny about this game as it plays out to see kind of how people will absolutely kind of stab your neighbor in the back type of aspect when you're playing this. Let them eat cake, pick up a copy if you run across it, click that like, hit the subscribe to join. This has been the McGuire Review and we'll see you next time.